our priest told us that he never once did a suicide once in his whole life. And when he moved here, he had to do one suicide. Next to know, through three, he did nine suicides. And he counted that up, that was up to six weeks. Every six weeks, there's a death happening in this town. And that's just crazy, like, that could be the highest suicide rate in Canada or none of it. A possible way to prevent suicides presented itself last July. When its station was being renovated, the RCMP needed a way to keep people out of jail. So the hamlet banned alcohol for a month. Calls to police dropped dramatically. So did the monthly number of prisoners, from 59 to 3. Oh, it was great. There was nobody drunk on the streets at night. It was quiet, nice, and you see people walking around at night sober, enjoying the weather, sunset. Uh, a lot of the family went out camping. That was fun? Yeah. yeah. The peace and quiet didn't last, though. Just days after the liquor ban was lifted, two teens committed suicide. Both had been drinking. That's when their classmates said, enough is enough. A week after the suicides, the kids marched through town to send a message to parents. There was people walking out of their work offices and joining us. People yelling, no booze, nothing, get it out. Millie Kalaktana is a volunteer for a local society dedicated to building healthier families. You got this camper two weeks ago? Yeah. In the past, she did her share of partying. Well, that's ready to go. But when asked to help organize that march, she was all for it. We learned that day of the march that we had to honor those who committed suicide. And to honor them meant we, sh we shouldn't be angry for what they did, but we should be, yes, we're saddened, but we have to take the message they're giving to us that life is sad. Um, let's turn the sadness around. Pushed by the kids, the community gathered. Few supported a total liquor ban, but they agreed to a plebiscite on whether to limit booze. Voters are being asked to say yes or no to an alcohol committee. It can create alcohol education and counseling programs. It will also have powers to decide who can get a liquor order and how much. If somebody's bringing in 12 bottles, you'd think they can't drink 12 bottles in a week. There must be bootlegging activity going on. So maybe that will help control some of the bootlegging activity. People will start to hopefully order for their own consumption, not for profit. The community held a similar vote three years ago and said no to restrictions. This time, the school kids want a different outcome. Scene 5A, that page, and then this page. They're putting on a play. We'll see you next Friday, same time. Shuts the door, walks towards wife. I know those two. Fucking bootleggers. There's a ball in there, eh? You, you bastard, you just gave him $300. Martha. Mike Johnson, a writer from Ontario himself, a former alcoholic, volunteered to come north. So we're going to do the drunk scene, you guys. The script, a collaboration between Mike and the kids, pulls no punches. That's good. Have some fun. Not too hard. Fly out for fun. Ah, going home. For what? Got homework to do. Fuck the homework, Kyle. He hopes their performance will sway the vote. Come on, man, it's not some window. Come on, Kyle. Kyle, you're still trying to resist, okay? You're still trying to resist. I think it's